guys hey uh, how you doing today um, thank you so much for tuning in once again to uh, our channel our uh, late study council as we mentioned time and time again this channel was uh, you know it came up as a result of uh, trying to uh, decode and understand council and the basics of it and we uh, try to come up with ideas on how we could uh, educate the public out there on the significance of cancer and the risks that are come with it and the complications that also come with it. And then I realized cancer has become uh, one of the uh, top killer diseases in the, all over the world. I'm sure it is very important that the world uh, gets to understand the dynamics of cancer. So in this channel, we measure basically on the causes of cancer, on the risk factors of cancer, on prevention uh, measures and, and mechanisms of cancer. We also uh, measure on screening and diagnosis of cancer, and then uh, the available uh, curative or therapeutic methods that are broadly available uh, as a result of some of the latest uh, researches that have been done uh, in the field of cancer. Now today I want us to look at something a little bit different, uh, uh, something that caught my eyes and caught my attention and it was suggested that we discuss just a little bit on some of the best cancer fighting foods. Uh, we looked at some of the causes of cancer uh, in our earlier on videos. If you haven't checked them, uh, I urge you to, uh, I think there's a link out there, uh, kindly take, just spend some time and go over them. At least we'll be able to flow together. Now, uh, once again, as I mentioned, uh, I'm currently doing my PhD in community health and development. Uh, I'm majoring on cancer. And so over some time in my practice, uh, I've come to develop some liking and interest in cancer, in oncology. And so uh, this is an area they really want to understand very well so that we'll be able to have at least uh, uh, people out there that are so much of uh, valuable and uh, information that could help them save their lives and even their prognosis as well. And uh, now, the, the, the certain kind of foods that uh, have been, people have talked about them time and time again, are that uh, they, 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 they are, they are uh, oxidants and you know, they, they, they have the ability to fight cancer, to ward off cancer from the body. And uh, today I wanted to just go through some of them and uh, I believe at the end of this episode uh, you'll be able to learn something new and something uh, fundamental as well. Now, uh, just to mention them real quick, uh, we've got apples and uh, there are berries, we've got uh, cruciferous vegetables, we've got carrots, uh, fatty fish, walnuts, legumes, supplements and medications and, uh, and and so many other things that I want us to look into today. But before we dive into them, I want to say thank you so much for all of you that have been able to so far subscribe to the channel. I know there's so many, lots of you that haven't yet subscribed. Uh, we need your support. And uh, I want to encourage you to just take a second and click on the subscription button. I believe there's a button here, a red button. Uh, just click on it and become part of uh, the Let's Study Cancer. Uh, channel and family LSC. Um, again, uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, just like our videos, and again, uh, leave a comment. And as usual, at the end of this episode, I will be asking you uh, a question uh, just to get your engagement and your thoughts uh, on the, some of the best foods uh, that have been known to, uh, to fight cancer. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are no foods, no foods uh, are able to protect people against cancer completely, 100% no. Uh, the term cancer fighting foods uh, basically refers to the foods that are able to reduce significantly the risk of developing cancer uh, if a person is able to add them into their daily uh, diet. So what these foods will do basically is they will reduce, they will lower the risk uh, of you developing cancer, uh, that is if you're able to include them in your daily diet. Uh, you may be surprised some of them, you've already been uh, adding them into your diet, but probably not uh, enough 
for you to get uh, to harness the benefits uh, from them. And so basically today uh, we aim to look at uh, the best cancer fighting foods and to explain the science you know behind that that supports uh, these claims and uh, the foods that contain naturally occurring compounds that have potent anti-cancer properties as they call them uh, number one we we'll look at apple apple fruit now uh, the fresh uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away I believe everyone knows it who could sing it and uh, it's such a popular fresh uh, it actually rings fairly true uh, because apples contain polyphenols that have promising anti-cancer properties. Now polyphenols are plant-based compounds that may prevent inflammation, uh, cardiovascular diseases and uh, infections as well. Now some research uh, suggests that polyphenols possess anti-cancer and tumor fighting properties in addition or as well. Now for example, uh, the polyphenol uh, fluoretin uh, it is able to inhibit a protein called glucose trans transporter 2, uh, GLUT2. Uh, those of you that have done biochemistry and uh, the nutrition, you should be able to understand what I'm saying. Uh, GLUT2 plays a role in advanced stage cancer uh, cell growth, in advanced uh, stage cell growth in certain types of cancer. And uh, there's a study that was done back in 2018, I believe, uh, in the General of Food and Drug Analysis. And uh, the study suggested that uh, apple fluoritin significantly inhibits the growth of breast cancer cells while not affecting uh, the normal cells. So only the cells that have been affected by breast cancer will be significantly uh, be inhibited they will not be able to grow uncontrollably and uh, uh, while the normal cells will not be affected in any way. Now the other food uh, that I want us to look at today is uh, the berries. Uh, berries are fruits are very rich in vitamins, vitamins and minerals and dietary, uh, dietary fibers as well. And scientists have shown a lot of interest in berries uh, because of their antioxidant properties and their potential uh, health benefit. As I mentioned, some of us have, have already been having them uh, added into our daily diet. Uh, once in a while we tend to pick them and just have them uh, added into a diet. But we've not really been, uh, we've not known what uh, you could really benefit from eating berries the right way. Uh, it's so much rich in antioxidant properties and also uh, so, so many other potential health benefits. Now, uh, one study that was done in the past uh, shows that uh, anthocyanin, uh, which is a compound in blackberries, uh, is able to lower significantly the biomarkers for colon cancer. Uh, colorectal cancer is one of the other uh, uh, popular cancers. Uh, so berries, a particular type of berries, in fact, was the blackberries, uh, there's a compound in it that is able to lower significantly uh, those biomarkers for uh, colorectal cancer. Now, in another study, uh, uh, another study that was done in the past was able to demonstrate that the anti-inflammatory effects of blueberries can prevent the growth of breast cancer tumors uh, in mice. Now this is a past study uh, that was done on mice and that's what I was able to reveal. Now the other thing I want us to look at uh, some kind of vegetables that are referred to as the cruciferous vegetables and cruciferous vegetables examples are the broccoli and the cauliflower the kales and uh, because they contain beneficial nutrients including the vitamin c vitamin k and manganese as well now cruciferous vegetables also called uh, uh, the sulforaphen uh, a plant compound with uh, very rich anti-cancer properties now, there's a study that was done in the past, and uh, the study showed that uh, sulforaphane, uh, the compound that is contained in these uh, cruciferous vegetables, uh, is able to significantly inhibit cancer cell growth and to stimulate cell death in colon cancer cells. In other words, uh, it will inhibit to a great extent uh, cells from growing uh, uncontrollably and rapidly. And you also, uh, stimulate uh, cell death, uh, almost similar to what is referred to as apoptosis 
uh, pro programmed cell death, uh, it will be able to stimulate cell death in colon cancer cells. Now, uh, another study also on the shame on the cruciferous vegetables that was done, uh, it showed that this compound, uh, in combination with uh, genstein, which is a compound in soybeans, can significantly inhibit breast cancer tumor uh, development and size as well. Now, this compound is also able to inhibit histone, uh, deacetylase, an enzyme uh, with links to the development of cancer. Now, one overview, one review uh, recommended, uh, I can't remember when it was really done, but it recommends uh, that we take three to five servings of uh, these cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the kales, uh, at least three to five servings uh, every week for the best cancer uh, preventive effects. Now, if you're able to get them, I think uh, uh, you can be able to meet up and take at least three to five servings uh, every week. Now, the other important thing they want us to look at, another important food uh, of vegetable is the carrots. Now, we all know carrots, and carrots contain several essential nutrients, including vitamin K, uh, vitamin A, and some other important antioxidants. Now, carrots also contain high amounts of beta carotene, uh, which is responsible for the distinct orange color of the carrots. Now, recent studies reveal that beta carotene plays a vital role in supporting the immune system and may prevent certain types of cancer. A review of eight studies that were done in the past shows that beta carotene has links to a reduction in the risk of both breast and prostate cancer. Now, this is amazing, guys. Uh, remember that carrots are some are things that you can actually, uh, uh, you know, access at any given time. I will get to your uh, to your grocery uh, store and you can pick. Uh, just grab some and uh, include them in your daily diet. Now, another analysis that was done in the past was able to show that higher consumption of carrots uh, resulted in a 26% uh, reduction in the risk of developing uh, stomach cancer. Now, uh, the other food that I want us to look at uh, uh, briefly uh, is uh, fatty fish. Now, fatty fish, uh, including salmon, mackerel, and uh, the anchovies, is uh, very rich in essential nutrients such as the vitamin B, potassium, and omega 3 fatty acids. Now, one study found that people whose diets were high in freshwater fish had a 53, a whooping 53% lower risk of developing colorectal cancer than those uh, that were low, uh, that were eating uh, you know, low, low portions of uh, freshwater fish. Now, another study also that was done in the past uh, found out that consumption of fish oil later in life uh, will have significant links in uh, reducing the risk for uh, developing prostate cancer. Now, these are amazing facts and amazing thoughts, uh, especially uh, for, those, uh, for those of you that are at risk of uh, prostate cancer. Now, we've talked about prostate cancer in the past, but now you should be well informed. Now, finally, a study uh, following about roughly about 68,000 uh, people that was done, uh, was, up, was able to reveal, uh, you know, that was done on people who had consumed uh, the fish oil supplements uh, at least four times every week. If I'm not wrong, uh, it was able to show that there was a sick, a whooping 63% uh, risk, I mean, uh, chances of developing colon cancer uh, compared to those that didn't uh, have at least four, uh, four, 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 four times a week uh, of the fish oil supplements. And so these supplements are, are, are important and they're very helpful in warding off cancer and more specifically uh, colon cancer. Now, the other food that I want us to look at is uh, uh, what I referred to as the walnuts. Now, according to the American Institute of, uh, for Cancer Research, uh, all nuts exhibit cancer preventing properties, but scientists have studied walnuts more than any other type of nuts. Now, I don't know why, but walnuts have been believed to contain a substance called, uh, and I don't know whether I'm going to get this right, uh, the uh, pedantule again. Uh, Mm, uh, it is a uh, uh, which the body metabolizes into uh, urolithins. 
are urolithins and the urolithins are compounds that bind to estrogen hormone and receptors that may play a role in preventing a breast cancer. So in short, there's a compound that is found in, a chemical that is found in the walnuts that is uh, uh, very important and it is key and will go a long way in preventing uh, the development of uh, breast cancer. Uh, in one animal, uh, a study that this study, a study was done, uh, obviously in mice, uh, so these mice were given uh, whole, whole walnuts and uh, walnut oils uh, or, and, uh, and walnut oil uh, had higher levels of tumor uh, suppressing genes than the mice that, re that, that received uh, vegetable oil. Uh, in other words, this study uh, they were trying to give uh, two types of oils uh, to this mice, the vegetable oil and then the oil are from the walnuts and uh, they discover that uh, uh, the mice that had taken or had consumed uh, the walnut oil, they had a very high chance of, as, uh, you know, of suppressing uh, tumor, uh, the tumor suppressing genes uh, in them. And uh, uh, some of these things are new, some of them are uh, things that you've come across, I uh, believe, at some point in time. Now, the other important thing that I think we all need to look at today uh, are the legumes. Uh, we all have consumed legumes at one point in time. Now legumes such as beans, peas and lentils uh, are very high and rich in fibers, we all know that. And these fibers will really help in lowering a person's risk of developing uh, cancer. And uh, a good example is colon, colon cancer. Now one meta-analysis of 14 studies uh, shows an association between high legume consumption and lower risk of colorectal cancer. In other words, are those people that tend to consume a high amounts, or high levels of, of legumes, uh, the risk of developing uh, colon cancer uh, will be significantly uh, reduced. Now, uh, there's another study that was done in the past and it was intended to examine the relationship between uh, the intake of bean fibers and the risk of breast cancer. And again, the results were tremendous and the results were amazing. So the study results are indicated that people who ate diets that were high in bean fibers, they had a 20% less uh, a chance, uh, or, you know, likely to develop breast cancer than those who did not meet uh, the daily uh, dietary fiber intake. Uh, uh, we all have come into contact with low gyms in the past. Now I think we may have to start uh, significantly adding them and uh, having them as uh, part of our daily food uh, as far as much as you can. Uh, there's a special portion and serving they're supposed to have uh, on a daily basis. Now let, let's look at something uh, just uh, uh, just a little bit on, on supplements and uh, medications in regard to uh, reducing the risk of developing cancer. Now although the foods uh, that we've talked about uh, and listed uh, uh, everyday products and are readily available. Some people may not want to make significant dietary or lifestyle changes. That, that is a fact. And uh, in, in this case, uh, there are plenty of supplements and medications that are available that contain anti-cancer compounds uh, as well. Uh, vitamins A, vitamin C, vitamin E are notable uh, for their anti-cancer properties and are available as supplements in most major grocery shops. Now I understand some of us, some of you uh, might not feel, be comfortable with the idea of having to buy uh, legumes and apples and uh, the, the cruciferous vegetables and uh, just having eating them uh, as they are every single day. And uh, the other option that we presented to you uh, right now is uh, the availability of supplements. There are supplements that are already available that are rich uh, in the vitamin C, vitamins A, vitamins E, uh, the antioxidants that are able to significantly reduce uh, your risks of developing uh, cancer. Now, uh, I would encourage, especially those of you that have got uh, a history uh, of cancer, someone in your family, uh, uh, has suffered or was, was once diagnosed with cancer, uh, obviously your risk, uh, you know, the, your risk goes a little bit higher. And so you need to make some significant changes in your diet uh, to be able to uh, protect yourself from developing uh, the cancer, obviously in addition to other uh, things that we need to, uh, to put 
uh, to consider such as exercise and all that. Now, uh, most of the plant-based uh, compounds uh, that we've talked about, uh, uh, obviously there are many, but they come in pill forms. So you can just grab a pill, uh, these supplements, and you'll be able to get all those uh, beneficial compounds that are rich in these, uh, some of these foods that we've talked about, excuse me. Now, there are over-the-counter medications such as aspirin and brufen uh, may also reduce uh, the risk of cancer. Uh, not, not on all people, uh, but in some people now, there's still a lot of research uh, that needs to be done uh, into this, but uh, it's worth not noting as well. Now, make sure that you always speak to your medical professional uh, before you start on a new medication or a supplemental regimen. Please, 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 don't just walk uh, into an over-the-counter or you know store or walk into a grocery and grab those supplements and just start taking them. No, please make sure that you're able to discuss with your physician, uh, discuss with your doctor, uh, uh, so that you'll be able to make an informed decision, uh, so that you'll be able to, to know how uh, to take them. Now, uh, what do we take away uh, today? What, what, what do we live with today? And now, as a summary, uh, research into preventing cancer through diet are uh, still uh, in the early stages and it requires further testing. Uh, there are a lot of researches and researches that needs to be done uh, in, in, in as far as diet uh, in connection to reducing uh, the risk of developing cancer. And scientists have carried out most of the studies, uh, obviously mentioned in, uh, in cells and uh, and, and, and in mice. Yeah, however, it is important to remember that eating a balanced diet that is high in fresh fruits, in vegetables, and good fats will, uh, to a great extent, benefit your overall uh, body health and therefore uh, reduce significantly the risk of developing uh, cancer, uh, if you will. And uh, I know there are so many other uh, foods out there uh, that you may also want to look into, uh, but uh, that marks the end of our of our of our uh, discussion today. Uh, I want to ask you a question: uh, What what other kind of foods uh, do you think might be helpful in reducing the risk uh, of cancer? What have you heard? What have you found in your studies? Uh, what have you found in your researches? I uh, would love to know. Uh, again, science is a broader a subject, but these are the ones that we have uh, done research, uh, I've read into them uh, critically on several articles, and uh, I believe they are, uh, they, 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 are, uh, they are able to provide uh, what they, uh, they say they can offer. Uh, the most important thing is that all these foods uh, contain some rich compounds and uh, let me call them chemicals uh, that are rich in uh, vitamins, uh, A, vitamin C, vitamin E uh, and other important minerals that are able to uh, help your body ward off, I mean fight off uh, cancer. Uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. Uh, if you've not yet subscribed to our channel, uh, I can't end without giving you an opportunity to do so. I believe there's a subscription button here, uh, somewhere here. Uh, make sure you subscribe and become part of our, uh, of our LFC. Uh, let's study cancer together. Now again, uh, uh, the question today, the question for today uh, is pretty much simple. Uh, what other foods have you uh, had or what other foods do you know? Uh, from your study or from your research, from what you've heard from your friends and so on and so forth, that are also able to uh, to, to reduce significantly uh, the risk of uh, someone developing cancer. I uh, thank you so much for sharing. Remember to give us a thumbs up. Uh, remember to give us uh, uh, to just drop a comment, and uh, we we'll really appreciate that. We we'll take time to go through all of them and get back to you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, stay safe. I'll see you in the next episode.